This is John Jackson Miller, and you're listening to the Star Wars Canon Podcast. May the Force be with you. There are stories about what happened. It's true. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. I am Brian Miller, your host, and I'm so glad that you've decided to join me to talk about our favorite thing in the world yet again, Star Wars. Guys, welcome to episode 66 of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. Uh, I, You know, it, I've been talking about episode 66 behind the scenes for a while uh, because it seemed like I was really close to it, and then because of the hiatus that I took, uh, because of everything going down uh, in the family, uh it's like a year and a half later since I started thinking about it. So here we are at episode 66. Uh, we'll be flying solo this week. Uh, hopefully we can get Usif back on next week. I know he's been having some things going on with his family as well. And uh, I told him that family was priority. Family needed to be taken care of before anything else and that the podcast would be here when he came back. So uh, hopefully everything is going well uh, on his side of the pond and that everything is going good with his family. And we can get him back on the show. Uh, next week because he's not with me this week I don't want to fire up I don't want to start up I don't want to fire up the the villain bracket again just yet that was his baby Uh, I think it's only appropriate that we do that when he's here Um, so uh, we're not going to be doing the villain bracket this week you know however though I was thinking uh, because this is kind of the big return episode of the Star Wars Canon podcast I thought maybe we would do a mailbag episode and I looked in the mailbag and sure enough after last week's episode Uh, You guys decided to send in quite a few questions and some pretty good ones, too. So I've got mm, seven. I've got seven questions picked out for this week, and I figured we would just kind of go through and have a mailbag episode. Uh, But before we get to the questions, I just wanted to let everybody know, yes, 1138productions.com is still live. You guys can still find the Star Wars canon timeline there, the Legends timeline as well. You can find this show and the Marvel cast both on that website as well. I am in the process of updating now the canon timeline. It got a little behind. Uh, like I said, with everything going on in my personal life, it, it kind of got a little bit behind. But I'm working on it. I'm, I'm getting it there. And uh, we'll, we'll get it back to its former glory. So make sure to check out 1138productions.com. Uh, definitely a, a, a cool tool for anybody trying to keep up with canon material. So uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up before we get into the questions is the live stream that I was going to do on Veterans Day uh, this last year. Uh, That live stream obviously never happened uh, because of personal things going on uh, here at the house, in my life, within my family, within the family here. uh, I wasn't able to, to, to get into the studio to work on it. For those of you that listened to last week's episode, um, I explained there kind of the reasoning why. So if you guys are curious, go check it out there. I, I don't want to rehash it again. So uh, the the live stream never happened, but it has been rescheduled. I got more than a few emails about it, uh, wanting to know kind of what was going on with it, why it didn't happen, did did we just miss it, like, you know. So I, uh, I, I figured I would address it uh, last episode and this episode, but now I've got a date for the reschedule. We're going to be doing the... Uh, live stream, the 24-hour live stream on May 6th of this year. Uh, For those of you that don't know what it is and what it is that I'm wanting to do, uh, this is a live stream to raise money and awareness uh, for uh, veteran suicide and the prevention of veteran suicide. Uh, As a uh, veteran myself, it's something that hits really close to home with me. Um, Some of my battle buddies that are no longer with us, victims of veteran suicide and, and, and it's it's taken a toll on me in the past and it's something that means a lot to me and it's something that I definitely want to raise awareness for uh, and some money for a uh, matter of fact there's a great website you can go check out called tillvahalaproject.com um, and they sell these awesome bracelets you can get bracelets you can get I mean necklaces t-shirts anything uh, my my bracelet says uh, do not give in to the war within and everything you purchase through the website helps 
uh, go towards memorials for fallen veterans and for veterans that were victims of uh, uh, veteran suicide and for their families. So it's a great cause. It's something that uh, I want to get behind and I definitely want to raise money for. So how are we going to raise money during this live stream? Uh, We are going to be playing for 24 hours the Jedi Fallen Order series. We're going to start probably about 7 o'clock that night. Uh, I think it's a Saturday night. Let me look real quick. Uh, I don't want to lie to you guys. Uh, May 6th is a Saturday night. So we'll do from Saturday night into... uh, Actually, we'll probably start Friday night on the 5th and then go all day on the 6th uh, until about 7 o'clock on the 6th. So mark your calendars for the 5th. We'll we'll call it the 5th. Um, And I'm wanting to start about 7 o'clock p.m. We're going to start with Jedi Fallen Order. We're going to be live streaming. Um, I haven't decided yet, either on the YouTube channel or I'm not sure if I want to do the 1138 gaming stuff on Twitch yet. So uh, let me know what you guys think about that. I'd like to like to hear your thoughts on that. But it's either going to be on the YouTube channel or on uh, I'll start a Twitch channel for all the gaming. I'll let you guys know well in advance where it's going to be if you guys want to participate in that. But the way we're going to raise money on it is during that live stream, Uh, I've got all of these, uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube or if you're watching the video version on Spotify or whatever, you guys can see in the background I've got all these hardback editions of canon novels that I've been getting over the years. I've got another bookshelf over there full of novels and and, and full of of hardback. Um, A couple of years ago, I went all digital. I got a Kindle, and I actually went back and repurchased all of these novels that I already have uh, for my Kindle version. So I've got my entire canon collection with me everywhere I go. I always have something to read now. It's way more convenient, and it's cheaper for each copy of the book. It's like $10 cheaper than buying these hardbacks. So I I went digital on my collection. And because of that, I no longer need all of these hardbacks. I'm going to keep a couple of them for sentimental value, ones that were gifts and whatnot. But um, So during the live stream, if you guys donate, uh, I haven't figured out the amounts yet, but if you guys uh, donate, let's say, a Tier 1 donation, you guys will have the choice of whichever canon novel you would like. And I will get your shipping information uh, away from the public eye, of course, and get those shipped out to you as a thank you for your donation. Um, the, fir- like, the, the first person to donate will get crack at the entire list, basically, and whichever novel they want, and then we'll cross that one off. Whoever donates next will get a crack from what's left, and so on and so forth, until we either run out of time or we run out of novels. And hopefully we'll run out of novels. Um, some of the novels are in trilogies, you know, you know what I mean? Um, you've got the Aftermath trilogy, you've got both Thrawn trilogies, Alphabet Squadron's a trilogy, the Queen's trilogy. There are some trilogies, uh, in the new canon with the novels, even the sequel films. I'm going to consider those as a trilogy as well. I, they, I think, you know, I've talked about it at length with the sequel films, how they make way more sense as novels. So I'm going to put those together as a trilogy also. So if you do a tier two donation, you get to choose which trilogy you would like for me to ship to you. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that this is a really good way to make sure not only that we can raise awareness and try to prevent veteran suicide, uh, but I can also put all of these canon novels into the hands of people who are going to appreciate them. I don't want them to just sit here and collect dust and be a backdrop. You know, so I want them to go to people who are going to appreciate them. Maybe there's one book in particular you've been looking to read. This would be a really great way for you to get it. Now, I've got everything from uh, A New Dawn from 2014. Uh, And I think I've got everything up to, I want to say Light of the Jedi, the first of the High Republic books. I've got everything up to that point in hardback. So if you're looking to complete your hardback collection, because uh, a lot of these you can't find in hardback anymore. You can just find paperback. Uh, if you guys are looking for them, uh, this would be a great way for you to uh, to kind of add to your collection, complete your collections, help donate to a great cause at the same time. Uh, I, 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 it's going to be a great time. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll be streaming uh, Jedi Fallen Order, and then if and when we finish Jedi Fallen Order, which we should, <laughs> we should, uh, we'll go right into Jedi Survivor because it comes out like the week before, and that'll kind of be the debut of us playing Jedi Survivor. So uh, that's the plan for Jan- or, I'm sorry for uh, May 5th. Make sure to jo- uh, mark your calendars to join us for May 5th, going all the way through into May 6th. Like I said, it's going to be 24 hours. We're going to start at about 7 p.m. on Friday, and we're going to go until about 7 p.m. on Saturday. So I'm going to have Kirsty probably bringing me down some coffee and 
And uh, I got to stay away from the energy drinks now. Uh, I've been, you know, they put me on high blood pressure medicine finally. So uh, it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm going to have to figure out some way to stay awake. But we'll be able to stay awake as long as you guys are talking and uh, kind of keeping me awake. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to do this. So uh, mark your calendars. I'm looking forward to that. So let's get into some mailbag questions, guys. Let's actually talk about some Star Wars. We didn't talk about a lot of Star Wars on the last episode because it was kind of just the getting the wheels turning again, picking up some traction. So let's get into this. Like I said, I've got seven mailbag questions this week. How do you guys get a question on the Star Wars Canon Podcast? It's very simple. You can email me at starwarscanonpodcast at gmail.com. I'll go through each week. Pick out a few uh, and, and throw them on the show. Now, if you want to get your question on the show, if you want to increase your odds of getting it on the show, uh, ask questions that maybe other people aren't asking. You know, if there's something really big happening in, you know, like a big news cycle, one big story, let's say they announce a new movie and then you, you know, ask questions about the movie, everybody else is going to be doing the same. So uh, if you want your question to kind of stand out, make it about something that isn't necessarily, you know, I hate the word mainstream, but, it, you know, it's mainstream. Uh, maybe something that nobody else is going to be thinking of, you know? So uh, if there's a big news cycle or something like that, and there's 50 questions about, you know, a new movie, odds are we're going to be talking about the movie during a podcast anyway, and I'm not going to probably pick any of those questions. So uh, make sure to send me some good ones. I'm, I'm, I'm always... I'm always up for a challenge on sending me stuff. So, like I said, I've got seven great questions this week. You guys didn't disappoint with the mailbag uh, after last week's episode. So let's get into this. Question number one this week comes from Scotty Mays. And Scotty says, Brian, so good to hear you back on the show this week talking our favorite thing in the world. Haha. Uh, I was hoping to get a question on your show. This is something that I've wondered about for a long time. Hopefully it isn't something you've already touched on. My question is about science and the Star Wars galaxy, specifically the faster-than-light travel. Does the Star Wars universe have the same laws of physics as our galaxy? Thanks for being an awesome part of our fandom, and may the Force be with you. Thank you for the kind words, Scotty. Uh, so, as far as physics go in Star Wars, this is something that I think we've touched on once before, but it's been a long time since we've done it. Uh, and I didn't touch on it for very long. But we can we can address it again, absolutely. This is something that, you know, you don't see a lot of people talking about in Star Wars. Uh, I, I believe Pablo Hidalgo was asked on Twitter once how fast the speed of hyperspace was. And I believe his answer, if I'm not mistaken, was hyperspe uh, hyperspace is the speed of plot. And so it's one of those things that, you know, it, it doesn't really have a scientific backup with it, right? Nobody knows what the hyperspace speed is or anything like that. Uh, but we do have a clue or two in the canon as to maybe what some of the physics of Star Wars are. You know, because obviously it can't be the entirely, it can't entirely be the same set of, you know, the same laws of physics as what our galaxy would have. Just based off, you know, they've got the force. You know what I mean? And, and, and hyperspace. We can't do that here, you know? And so, uh, at least not yet. And so you have to kind of do a suspension of disbelief kind of thing, right, with Star Wars because it's just it's used as a plot device, hyperspace and stuff like that. However, as far as the speed of light goes, the, 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 the faster than light travel, uh, I'm no expert in it whatsoever. I know kind of the basics, you know, what happens when you travel faster than the speed of light. And I don't believe those effects really carry over into the Star Wars galaxy. If they did, do you know how much older Luke Skywalker would be than Leia when they meet for the first time? You know, it, it, it's, you know, from the time dilation and stuff like that. If you want an idea on faster than light physics, there's a great YouTube video you can check out. Uh, it's from a channel called Cool Worlds. And it's this professor in uh, New York that sits down and, and basically puts uh, scientific stuff into layman's terms. And there's one particular video that I love watching. It's exactly a half hour long. Um, it's like Journey to the End of the Universe or something like that um, on the title. I don't remember the exact title of it, but it's the, the thumbnail for it is like blue and red, and it kind of fades in between. So definitely go check out that video if you want to know more about you know our laws of physics with faster than light travel. It's very interesting. It's incredibly interesting, and, and it's hard to tell you how interesting that video is and, and how well he breaks it down unless you just see it for yourself. So definitely go check out that video if you can find it. Uh, I would point you in that direction. However, as far as Star Wars goes, there are some nods here and there that talk about 
the physics of Star Wars. And my favorite one, I think the best one, is in the novel Bloodline, where you know Leia. This this novel takes place five or six years before uh, the Force Awakens. It's before the Resistance has really formed. It's before the First Order has really gotten their foot in the door. They're starting to be a big deal, um, but everybody in the Senate is just kind of ignoring it, you know, because they don't want, they don't feel like dealing with it. So, in this novel, uh, there's a there's a part, and I don't remember exactly who it is Leia is speaking to when she makes this comment. But they're on a planet. I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if they're on Hosni and Prime I, or Chandrilla. I don't remember exactly where they're at. Uh, but she's speaking to a friend of hers and she is talking about perspective and stuff, and she points up at the sky, at the night sky, at the stars. And she points at one star in particular, and she says, you see that star? That is Alderaan. And the person she's with is, but Alderaan was destroyed 30 years ago or something along those lines, and I don't remember the exact wording of the conversation. So if you guys just read it and I'm butchering it, please forgive me. I haven't read it since 2016, but this scene stands out to me. Uh, and she says, well, the light from that explosion, from its destruction, hasn't reached here yet. And so I can still come here and see Alderaan. And she, the, the, what she was trying to say was, you know, basically the point she was making, the, the further away from Alderaan she feels, the closer to home she, you know, she, she, or the further away from Alderaan she gets, the closer to home she feels. Because she can still see it. She can see back into time, basically, and see Alderaan still floating out in space. So... The speed of light seems to be a constant, at least in the Star Wars universe. Uh, as far as the time dilation and everything that happens when people start traveling faster than the speed of light, that obviously doesn't take effect. Uh, I don't remember where I heard this, or where, I don't remember if I heard it or read it or, or what, but I seem to recall, it's one of those things you seem to recall vaguely, like you know you've seen it, but you don't remember where you saw it. I remember somebody saying at one point that the way Star Wars hyperspace worked was to you... You go into hyperspace. The further away you're traveling, the longer it takes, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight hours, even a day, you know, up to a day, even more. But to the galaxy itself, to, to real space, real-time space, you enter hyperspace, you exit hyperspace. Just that quick, in an instant. I don't know if that's how it actually works. But I remember hearing that somewhere. So take that with a grain of salt. But I, that, that And that was years ago. That was before even the Disney buying Lucasfilm and everything. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. But it's something fun to think about. I don't have an exact answer to your question. Uh, but as far as the laws of physics go, I don't think it's the same set of laws. I think some of the laws are the same, like the speed of light get carried over. But other than that, you're, I mean... There's no telling. You know, you're talking about a galaxy where there are monks who can wield the force, make things levitate, jump. There's blasters and lightsabers and, and kyber crystals, you know, and it's, so it's this fantastical world. Like I said, there has to be some suspension of disbelief, right? So uh, I hope that answers your question good enough for right now. That's about as best as I could do. Uh, you're going to have to take it to Pablo Hidalgo if you want something better than that. So, thanks for sending in the question, Scotty, and thank you again for the kind words. It is great to be back. Question number two this week comes from Tegan Matthews. And Tegan says, since we got a name drop for Thrawn in The Mandalorian, do you think we'll get to see him in Season 3? Either way, we're going to see him at some point, right? He wouldn't get a mention and then just be forgotten about, right? Uh, thanks for the question, Tegan. And no, they are not. They haven't forgotten about Thrawn. I promise you they haven't forgotten about Thrawn. That was such a big deal when he got name dropped in season two of the Mandalorian, that was a seed that was planted very specifically in the soil that it needed, needed to be planted in for it to thrive. That was exactly where and when that name drop needed to happen. And nothing has happened since then because that was exactly where they wanted to drop it. And they've got plans. I promise you they've got plans for Thrawn. Will it be in the Mandalorian? Ah, uh, I doubt it. Very seriously. I don't think they're going to bring Thrawn into Season 3 of Mando. That whole episode of Mando where he was mentioned was the first time we got an on-screen live-action Ahsoka Tano. And since then, we have found out that she is getting her own show later this year. Uh, and they've, I mean, they've already wrapped, I think they've wrapped production, if I'm not mistaken. If they, I think they've already wrapped filming. But it, it's supposed to come out later this year. 
we don't know exactly when, but it's probably going to be the winter show that comes out, you know, around Thanksgiving, around the holiday time, uh, season this year. That's going to be the show where you're going to start getting mentions of Thrawn. I promise you that's when that's going to happen. I don't see it being a Mando. I think that episode of Mando was simply a conduit for them to bring in a live action Ahsoka Tano and to kind of say this is where she's at in the timeline, this is what she's doing, and we're setting it up for her own show to come out later on. I think that's all that was. It's now been like two years since we got that Thrawn mention, right? No, they haven't forgotten about it. There, I remember thinking for the longest time after the Rebels season finale, the series finale, sorry, when, if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, when Thrawn and Ezra you know, launch into the Unknown Regions. For the longest time, I thought, they're never going to tug on that string again. They're never going to follow that thread to see what happened. Never. They did this cliffhanger ending for the season fin- or the series finale of Rebels, and they're never going to touch on it again because we went so long without them saying anything about it. And then Ahsoka comes along in The Mandalorian and says, where is your master? Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? Now, we know that that scene in Mando takes place before the epilogue of Rebels. So when you see Ahsoka at the end of Rebels with Sabine, she has already had that conversation uh, uh, about Thrawn. She's already met Din Djarin. That's where that falls in the timeline. The Ahsoka series is going to be her going after Ezra and Thrawn. We already know Ezra has been cast for that show. We haven't heard anything about Thrawn yet, which is kind of interesting that they haven't said anything about casting Thrawn. But I promise you, it's going to be in the Ahsoka series. And and furthermore, I'll, I'll, I'll go this far too. Back in 2020 at the Investor's Day call, Kathleen Kennedy got in front of the camera and she announced all these new shows. It was At the time, it was uh, Mando Season 2, uh, Rangers of the New Republic, Ahsoka was getting her own series, Lando was getting a series. You know, we were getting all of these other series. You know, Visions was announced. Um, a droid story was announced. All these other things were announced. And she made the comment, and you know, she, she made the comment that all those shows were going to culminate into this massive crossover event that was going to be epic on television. It was this television epic. Since then, Rangers of the New Republic has been canceled. As far as we know, there's been nothing else about it. And it was supposed to be a Cara Dune show, and when they fired Gina Carano, that was kind of where that show got dumped. But I don't believe for a second that because they canceled one of those shows that they're going to completely change course with this entire culmination event, right? I'm a firm believer that that culmination event, that end game, if you would, for these shows is a confrontation, an all-out confrontation between the New Republic and Thrawn. I, I completely agree. I, 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 I completely believe that. Um, I called it back then. As soon as she said there was going to be a culmination event, I had a feeling. And then the moment Ahsoka Tano said the words, where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? I knew at that moment, that's exactly what this was going to be. So I've been saying it for two years. Uh, and, and just because it hasn't happened yet, doesn't mean it's not going to, I promise you that's what it's going to end up being. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Thrawn, I don't know why you wouldn't be at this point, but if you're not, there was, uh, a, a trilogy of legends novels that w- you know came out in the early 90s. It was uh, Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and I believe The Last Command was the, the last book. And it was set up this guy, Grand Admiral Thrawn, as the main bad guy for our heroes from the classic trilogy after Return of the Jedi. And they can't tell that story proper now with where they've kind of gone with the canon, but there's still a space there where you can tell that story, you know, a kind of adapted version of it with our big three, with Han, Luke, Leia, Lando, Chewie, the droids. You can tell that story. You could even bring in a Mara Jade type character at this point, even though there's no mention of her in the sequel films anywhere. You could bring in a character like that and alter the story enough to make it fit into this canon because that is the time period where there's hardly anything there in canon. There's hardly anything there. They've got free reign. They can do stuff like that. If they're bringing dark troopers in from the dark forces games into that time period, then they can bring in Thrawn and tell an adaptation, you know, not exactly, you know, word for word from the book, but a canon version of that story. That's going to happen. I promise you that's going to end up happening, and I cannot wait for it. Just thinking about it gets me giddy. I, I, I it's going to happen, and 
when it does, people are going to realize. I remember when Thrawn was first brought into canon with Rebels. And everybody lost their minds. They're excited that they we're going to see Thrawn again. But the biggest complaint everybody had was, well, it's not during the same time period as when the novels took place. Uh, cool, I get it. But when that happens, you're going to look at all the other times Thrawn popped up and be like, well, that was all just precursor to this. Can you imagine seeing a live-action confrontation with Han, Luke, Leia, Lando, Chewie, the droids, the New Republic, Mando, Ahsoka, like bringing all of them together to fight Thrawn? That is going to be mind-blowingly awesome. So I promise you it's going to happen. Is it going to happen this year? No. Is it going to happen next year? Probably not. It's going to be a few years down the road. You're going to want these shows to get a couple seasons under their belt before they really take off and, and, and go for this Thrawn thing. It's going to happen, I promise you. So give Mando a couple more seasons. Give Ahsoka a couple seasons to kind of thrive. And uh, just kind of wait and see where we go from there. So I promise you Thrawn's going to happen. They haven't forgotten about it. Buckle your seatbelts here in the next couple of years because I'm calling it right now. You guys can come back to this episode in like two or three years when I say this was going to happen and you can you can quote me. Even if I'm wrong, come back and quote me and make me look like an idiot. So I promise you that's going to happen. I understand where your, your concerns are coming from. They're, they're completely unwarranted, I promise. So uh, all I'm going to say is stay tuned. Stay supportive of what Disney and Lucasfilm is doing with the television shows, and, and, and it'll happen, I promise. So thanks for sending in the question, Tegan. I do appreciate it. Uh, question number three this week comes from Cody Geisler. I don't want to butcher your name, brother, and I'm so sorry if I did. I'm no good with names. You guys know that. Cody Geisler. And uh, Cody says, hey, Brian and Yusuf, I'm an avid listener to your show, but have never admitted, or I'm sorry, have never submitted a question. So I thought I'd give it the old college try. We just got the announcement today that E.K. Johnston is writing a Kira novel called Crimson Climb. Do you think this will be the follow-up to the solo film as a sequel or a new story all the way around? I love that, uh, I'm sorry, I love what she did with the Ahsoka and Padme books. So I think it's fitting that she write this character as well. Thanks for everything you do, and it's great to see you back. Thank you very kindly, Cody. And yes, this is the novel that was just announced on Wednesday. I'm very excited about it. Uh, E.K. Johnston came out on her Twitter account and said that she was writing a Kira novel called Crimson Climate. It's, out in, uh, it's due out in October. I'm very excited for this novel. Uh, a synopsis has since released for it, and basically the synopsis, I'm not going to read it verbatim, uh, but the synopsis basically says that this story takes place during that two-year period, you know, in Solo where, you know, he he gets away and she gets drugged back to the White Worms. It says two years later, and then it shows him in the Empire. This novel takes place during that two-year period. Or five-year period, I think. Is it five or two years? I don't remember. I think it's two years. But anyway, uh, it's during that period. Uh, this is one I'm really looking forward to because E.K. Johnston, uh, when she's writing female-centric novels blows them out of the water does does an amazing job uh she wrote the ahsoka novel which since then has been edited i don't know if you guys know that or not but they went back and edited um the digital version at least my kindle let me know um several months ago that there was an updated version of the book so i downloaded it and then i googled what the differences were and basically they made the novel more in line with season seven of clone wars i completely shocked that they went back and did that but uh the the new versions of the novels if the digital ones at least and maybe the new print versions i don't know i haven't looked at those um have updated some of the story aspects anyway that that's not not that's neither here nor there anyway so ek johnston wrote an ahsoka novel it was a great novel. It was a great look into Ahsoka and what she was dealing with after Order 66 a year later. Uh, then E.K. Johnston went on to write uh, a trilogy of Padme novels. The Queen's Trilogy is what I call it. I don't think anybody else refers to it as the Queen's Trilogy, but I refer to it as the Queen's Trilogy. Uh, I've got a review up for it also over on the YouTube channel for the Star Wars News Net, so you guys can head over and check that out. Break down each book individually and then overall as a trilogy what my thoughts were. Uh, and I'll put a link to that video in uh, the description for this podcast, wherever you guys are listening. But E.K. Johnston does really well writing these female characters. And even with Queen's uh, uh, Hope, well, I think it was the last one, she threw in extra little chapters about other female characters in Star Wars. She covered Shmi and, and Brew Lars. Like, th there were really cool moments in there. And so if Disney were to have come to me and said, hey, 
were wanting to do a Kira novel during her time with Crimson Dawn, who do you think should write it? I would have said E.K. Johnston needs to write that book. That, 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 that's an E.K. Johnston project. So uh, I'm very excited about this book. Uh, but it's got me kind of wondering. I don't know. I have nothing to back this up. I have nothing to back up what I'm getting ready to say. This is just my hopes and dreams. This is me hoping that this is ends up being a thing. I'm hoping that this ends up being the first in a Kira trilogy of novels, the same way she did the Padme novels, the, the, the Queen's trilogy. I have nothing to back that up. But in my mind, it works because this story could tell, you know, what was going on during that two-year period, you know, in between, uh, you know, the, the beginning of Solo and the, the main story of it. The second book, look, the E.K. Johnson with the Queen's Trilogy, when she was telling the story of Padme, she there was one book where it was basically the events of Episode 1 from Padme's point of view and then mixed in some stuff that was happening on Naboo during the, the, the occupation. She could do something like that with Kira as well. Basically tell this story. The second book, could, you know, the first half could be the events of Solo, but from Kira's point of view, which that was a huge you know, part of her life, seeing Han again and being reunited with him and doing that whole mission. And then talking with Maul, like we saw in the film and being told to come meet me on Dathomir and, you know, and whatnot. That could be, you know, halfway through the second book. And then we see what happens. This is just me speculating. Remember, then you can see what happens when she goes to Dathomir, meets with Maul. And in the third book, we could find out what happened to Maul because think about, where Maul was during this time, like he was in charge of this crime syndicate, one of the one of the most feared and respected crime syndicates, by the way. When they came back in the comics, everybody's like, "Whoa, Crimson Dawn's back!" Oh crap! But Maul wasn't in charge of it. And when we see Maul in Rebels season three or four, I don't remember which season it was now, and I'm kicking myself for that. I want to say it was season four. Oh man, you guys are probably screaming at me when Maul popped back up in Rebels. Uh, we saw what happened with him and Obi-Wan. And so we know that was the end of the line for Maul. But what happened with Crimson Dawn? Why did he walk away from that? He wanted to matter so much in his life, but he walked away from it. You know, being in charge of Crimson Dawn, that was a big deal, right? So that third Kira novel could be what happened to Maul, how she kind of took over and became the leader of this crime syndicate. This is going to be an awesome book. You know, it's got to cover her learning the fighting styles that she was employing during, you know, in the films. Um, you know, the the whole history with Dryden Voss. So looking forward to this. So yes, I am very happy about this book. But it's it's going to be a new story for Kira. It's going to be you know that that two year period. So uh, it's it just makes sense that E. K. Johnson would write this character. And that she's the one writing this book. So maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe I'll get lucky. And this will be a trilogy. Uh, I'm sure we won't know if it's going to be until probably this time next year. If the book doesn't come out until October. Maybe by the end of the year we'll know if there's going to be another Kira novel. I'm hoping there is. Fingers crossed, right? Excuse me for just a second. Sorry. I need something to drink. Standing here, Sitting here talking to you guys for a while. Make your throat dry out quick. Uh, so I hope that answers your question, Cody. Yes, I'm excited about the book as well and, uh, can't wait to, uh, find out more about it. So thanks for sending in the question. Question number four this week was signed as Lady Tano and Lady Tano sent in a question that says, hello there. Uh, love the show and what you're doing for the fandom by being a positive influence. This fandom needs more of that. Definitely wish you had more subs and views, and congrats on joining the Star Wars Newsnet. Thank you very kindly. I appreciate that. Uh, are we going to be getting a 40th anniversary book for Return of the Jedi this year? I've really enjoyed the first two and hope to see a third. Keep doing what you're doing and never stop. Thanks for sending in the question, Lady Tano. And yeah, we're getting a 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi. There's no way we're not. Uh, so if you didn't know, and you know, it was like six years ago, it was... Uh, 17, 2017, we were celebrating the 40th anniversary of the original Star Wars film. They released a book of 40 short stories told from 40 different points of view celebrating 40 years of Star Wars. And this book, all these short stories were told from the points of view, uh, points of, view of other characters, background characters, of what was going on and how the, the story of the original Star Wars happened. And it was a really fun book. 
Don't get me wrong. Very fun book. And the thing I was looking forward to the most with it was the cantina. I wanted to know, you know, I wanted like, you know, nine or ten stories from the cantina telling, you know, basically what was happening from their point of view. Man, when this book came out, (laughs) there was like 20 stories from the cantina in this book. Half of it was cantina. And the thing I was looking forward to the most in this book ended up being the thing that made it drag on so badly for me. Still a great little collection of stories um, and, and, and a couple of little revelations in there and, and stuff like that, but uh, it, was a, it was a really fun read. So three years ago, we were celebrating the 40th anniversary of you know Empire, naturally, and they did uh, 40 short stories for Empire. And they were great. There were, I mean, there were a couple of stories in there where I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe you guys did this in a story. Uh, not to, not no spoilers. I don't want to give any spoilers, but there's a story uh, about the Tauntaun that Luke was on that got eaten by the Wampa, right? That Tauntaun was related to the Tauntaun Han sliced open to save Luke's life. And that whole story is from the point of view of the Tauntaun. Uh, so it's a kind of a messed up story that was in there, but it was so fun to read. And whoever decided to write that one hats off to you because that was an awesome read. Um, so there's some cool, I, there's some cool ideas in there. Um, there was one weird one. If I remember right for empire, you got to tell the events, right? Of the empire strikes back. But some of these events, there's only two people present for, and you know what I'm talking about? The, the Vader Luke duel. There were only two people present for that. Who else was that story going to be told through? Turns out there was somebody sneaking around in the air vents and the ventilation shafts that saw all this happening from a distance. And basically they're catching snippets of what was being said. I'm your father, hand getting lopped off, cool laser swords, uh, and a guy jumping to his death. Basically that's what was from that point of view. That was a little bit of a weird one, knowing now that there was somebody crawling around in in the ventilation shaft. But I guess there was really no other way to tell that story. Anyway, it was a lot of fun to read. This year is the 40th anniversary for Return of the Jedi. And I promise you we're getting a 40 short stories for Jedi. We've got a 40th anniversary panel coming for Celebration in April. uh, And I'm sure that's where... It's Celebration's when they're going to announce this book. I I guarantee it. Um, They might announce it between now and Celebration. And then we get more information at Celebration. But I'm willing to bet they're going to announce it there. Uh, and then it'll come out probably in the fall of this year, if I'm if I'm guessing, if I was a betting man. But I promise you, we're still going to get it. I'm going to give you guys a warning right now. Mark my words. Out of those 40 short stories for Return of the Jedi, 30 of them are going to be in Jabba's Palace. You mark my words. 30 of them. I guarantee. <laughs> Maybe not exactly 30. I'm exaggerating. But there's going to be so many stories from Jabba's Palace. All I'm saying is get ready because that's what it's going to be. You're going to hit Jabba's Palace, and that's what it's going to be for three quarters of that book. I promise you. I, 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 that's what it's going to be. And I remember in Legends, there was a story that they, they, they wrote a story about, you know when Luke is in the Rancor pit and he picks up the skull, throws it at the panel, big door comes down, hits the Rancor. That skull, they did a, a, a Legends story completely around the guy that skull belonged to and how it got there. That's ridiculous. Look, be ready for a story, a canon version of that story. That skull is going to get a story. I promise you that. I'm willing to bet they do. Somebody sits down and they watch, you know, these movies and they start picking out background characters. And then they're like, yeah, we're going to do a story from their point of view. We're going to do a story from their point of view. The skull is going to be one of them. If, if the empire strikes back book, had a story from the point of view of a Tauntaun that was worried about its daughter because it never came back with Luke, and then it gets sliced open to save Luke's butt, there's going to be a story based around that skull. I pro- that, that, that's, that's my prediction right now. I'm going I'm to call it right now. I have nothing to back that up right now. I don't know anything. All I'm saying is that's going to happen. So don't worry. The book is going to happen. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be this year. It's probably going to come out either in the summer or fall. But they're going to announce it in April at Celebration. Not to worry. So uh, hopefully it's a really good read. And hopefully we're not in Jabba's Palace for 30 stories of the 40s. So thanks for sending in the question, Lady Tano. I do appreciate it. 
Uh, question number five this week comes from Jessica Reiner. And Jessica says, it's been over three years since we've gotten a Star Wars feature film. When do you think we'll get the announcement of the next uh, of the next one? And when do you think it will release? Thanks for sending in the question, Jessica. Uh, Celebration is coming up in April. And I think a lot of our questions are going to be answered about the future of Star Wars come April. At least the immediate future of Star Wars. Uh, When do I think we'll get the announcement? It'll be it'll be during Celebration. That's that's when it's going to be. It, we may even get the announcement of what the movie's going to be. But I guarantee we're going to get the announcement of the movie and announcement for when it's coming out. When do I think it's coming out? I'm going to say Christmas next year. I, I'm i thinking, because we haven't had any news for a Star Wars movie, right? Either, ooh, man, I don't even want to say next year. Next year might be too early still. Ugh. Uh, you know, we, we haven't, we've got nothing but rumors of these Star Wars projects that keep going into into development, out of development. The whole Patty Jenkins thing happened with Rogue Squadron, and, you know, that's not happening now. You know, a while back we had a, a an interview with Kathleen Kennedy saying they had a roadmap where they wanted to go with the films and everything, and we keep hearing rumors about, you know, the, these, these films that are going into production. Still haven't heard anything on the Ryan Johnson trilogy, uh, you know, that was supposed to be in production. So I think, I think, Lucasfilm and Disney realized they shot themselves in the foot a little bit with the sequel films. Whether you guys liked them or not, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking you if you liked them. I wasn't a fan. I'm just saying I, I'm i not knocking them. But they didn't have a plan going into that story. That's you. Whether you liked it or not, you have to admit they didn't have a plan going into it. And I think Lucasfilm learned from that mistake. At least I'm hoping they did. Because when Kathleen Kennedy made the comment, you know, we have a roadmap of where we want to go. That was music to my ears. That was exactly what I wanted to hear. Because look at what they've done with the with the television shows, right? They had a roadmap where they were going with all of that. And look at how well it's done. And, you know, with Mando and, you know, there's some moments in Book of Boba Fett that weren't great, just saying. You know, but that kind of tied in with the story. And the Ahsoka series, I'm so looking forward to the Ahsoka series. Obi-Wan, I know, had its lovers and haters. I get it. Andor, look at what look at what they did with Andor. Andor was so good. It was so good. Um, I, I think they've learned their lesson with the sequel films. And honestly, I'm happy that they've kind of taken a step back from the films, especially three years. Yeah, it's been three years. I, I like the fact that they've taken a step back to reset and go, okay, where did we mess this up at? Where can we improve? Where can we do this better? Let's focus on the the television arena for right now. And boy, have they focused on it. And I think they've done an amazing job with it. Um, I think now, I think they've learned a lot from the television aspect of it that they're going to be bringing into the film aspect. And I, I think we're in for something great. Uh, I don't know what they're going to announce. I don't know what their plan is. Uh, but for the films, I, I at least believe we're in for something great. Um, I want to believe I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic right now. Uh, so I, we're going to get an announcement at celebration for the next film. Maybe an announcement for more films. Definitely not going to get release dates for them. I don't think, but we're definitely for sure going to get the next film announced and the release date. And man, I don't know if I want to stay on that coming out next year at December. I'm going to say, man, it's already been three years though. We don't know how far they are into production with some of these projects. Um, I'm going to say 2025, December of 2025 is when the next one's coming out. I think they're going to announce, uh, the film, what it's going to be. I think that'll probably be it. And maybe who's directing it. Maybe not. Yeah. They'll probably direct, announce who's directing it and it'll come out in, uh, I'm going to say December of 2025. I think if they announce it now and they give themselves that two and a half years to work on it, that's... That seems to be the smart thing to do. Just because it's the smart thing to do, though, doesn't mean that's what Disney's going to do. But anyway, that's my prediction. I'm going to say they're going to announce the next film at Celebration this year. It's still going to be two and a half more years before it comes out. Um, That's going to be at the latest. Look, we're closer to the next film than we are, you know, past Rise of Skywalker. We're closer to the next film than we are, you know, if it's here, you know, halfway points here, I think we're closer to the new film than we are the release of Rise of Skywalker. So uh, just like, boy, I'm about to blow some people's mind too. I I didn't realize it until the other day 
but we're closer to Avengers Secret Wars coming out, which is supposed to wrap up Phase 6, than we are past Endgame. Think about that. Like, that was three years ago, too. And now we're closer to... <laughs> To Secret Wars. It's insane when you start thinking about how far into the future we've already gotten past all these giant tentpole films that we were looking forward to, like counting down days for, and look at how far past we already are from them, you know? And we'll get there with these films and, and with the whole Thrawn thing I talked about earlier, too. There'll be a time where we're like, man, that was three years ago. That was four years ago. It's hard to believe, but we'll get there. So uh, keep an eye out for Celebration. I think this is going to be a massive celebration. Uh, I think they have a lot. they have a lot of ground to make up. On the, on the feature film side, trying to win people back. I whether Like I said, whether you like the sequel films or not, they've got to make up some ground. So uh, keep an eye out for Celebration, and uh, that's, that's going to be my prediction. So thanks for sending in the question, Jessica. Uh, I do appreciate it. Question number six this week comes from Dave Maxwell. And Dave says, Hey, Brian, I'm a little confused while reading the Thrawn novels. I agree with your earlier assessment that these are advanced Star Wars reading. So much world building outside of the galaxy we know. Maybe I'm reading them out of order or something, but it seems like there's a continuity error between the two trilogies. In one of the first books, Thrawn comes across Anakin Skywalker. But there's never any mention of that in the second Thrawn trilogy, which is a prequel set. Am I missing something? Please help. Thanks for the question, Dave. And uh, yeah, I'm going to back up the uh, first part of your question real quick and talk about this. I, you're, you must be reading uh, Thrawn Ascendancy because... There's two Thrawn trilogies that are canon right now. There's the Thrawn trilogy, what I call the Thrawn trilogy, and then there's the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy, uh, which is a prequel to the Thrawn trilogy. Uh, the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy, I have referred to in the past as advanced Star Wars reading. Yes, you're absolutely right. Somebody who's never read a Star Wars book in their life and they just watch the films for the first time and they want to get into the books, you don't put the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy in their hands. You're going to scare them away faster than anything. These things are so Game of Thrones-esque that it's insane. These, This is literally, like the Thrawn Ascendancy novels are literally Game of Thrones in the Star Wars universe. That's what they are. Uh, and it's all around the Chiss Ascendancy. Outside of what the Chiss call lesser space, which is like New Republic space, that's where these books take place is outside, like in, you know, in their unknown regions or whatever. And there's this entire, like, society, like this entire, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just this, this giant tree of all these societies out in this area that kind of fall under the Chiss Ascendancy and kind of under their rule, if you would. And, I mean, there's character building and there's world building and there's, you know, culture building. And then just, then you then you throw Thrawn into the middle of it who, you know, can kill an enemy by just looking at art from his people. Like, it's insane when you start reading these books. They're amazing books, don't get me wrong. But they are advanced reading. These are books that when you sit down, you take your time. You don't rush going through these books. You don't look at all three of them as individual books. You look at all three books as one massive story. I would even go as far as to say, if you're going to read the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy, sit down with a pad of paper and take notes as you go. Because they, I mean, they are deep and they are they are complicated and they're complex. And, you know, things that happen in the first book come back to light in the third book. Like, there's so much there, right? But they're all a prequel story to the Thrawn trilogy. The Thrawn trilogy, you know, that came out first, it is the story of Thrawn coming to the Empire, being found by the Empire, joining the Empire, rising through the ranks, and becoming Grand Admiral Thrawn. And I think it leads up right to, like, the day before the series finale of Rebels. Like, I mean, it's that, it's his time during the spotlight of the Empire. Um, and the Thrawn Ascendancy novels lead right up to the moment where he get you know, the, the first Thrawn book happens, the, the of the trilogy, the, the first Thrawn trilogy. So there's... A couple of different ways you can read these books. And I would say read them in the order they came out. And that's just me, okay? Um, I would read the first Thrawn trilogy during the Empire and then go back and reread the prequel books. Just that's what makes the most sense to me anyway. However, if you want to read them chronologically, you can do that also, and they still make just as much sense. Um, and that's what, I mean, that's a good way to read them too. But there's a tedious way you could read these books and get everything chronologically. Um, 
Dave, I don't think you missed anything in the books. It was so su- it was subtle in there that that crossover. So in Thrawn Alliances, which is the second of the Thrawn uh, trilogy, the first Thrawn trilogy, there's two stories being told at the same time, and one is a flashback story, and one is like what present day, right when the book takes place. The present day stuff is Thrawn and Vader, and the flashback stuff is Thrawn and Anakin. Thrawn came across Anakin during the Clone Wars and met him and, and you know and, and helped him with this mission to save Padme. And the two stories run kind of parallel. They're, they're on the same planet, you know, and, and everything. The stories run parallel with each other. The flashback and the and the the present day stuff, the Anakin Invader stuff. But when Thrawn comes across Anakin for the first time, and you read it from Thrawn Alliances, you see that entire conversation from Anakin's point of view. They're in two separate ships out in the void of space, and they're talking over the you know the the communicator. And you see it all from Anakin's point of view, and there's some pauses on the end of Th- on Thrawn's end, and then he come back and talk. Well, when you read it from the Thrawn ascendancy point of view, that same conversation happens, but it's from Thrawn's point of view, and. Those times where he was pausing to, to answer Anakin, he was talking to his navigator that was with him. And so it, it seems like this was planned out, right? Like Timothy's on planned this out where, you know, these conversations were happening at the same time. It's in there. If you're reading the Thrawn Ascendancy book, I think it's the second book, if I'm not mistaken. It's in there, I promise. Um, it, it's him going off into lesser space with his Skywalker. Not Skywalker, but with his Skywalker. Um and that's when the whole Anakin Thrawn thing happens. And it says in the Thrawn Ascendancy book he's gone for like six weeks. And then he comes back and he has that shield generator with him that Anakin gives him in the first Thrawn trilogy. So there's a tedious way you could read these books. You could read book one of Thrawn Ascendancy, book two up until he meets Anakin Skywalker, and finish that part of the book. And then go back and read those chapters from Thrawn alliances of him and Anakin then go back and read you know finish book two read book three and then read Thrawn the Vader and Thrawn stuff from Thrawn alliances and then treason if you really want to get chronological that's the order you need to read it in but it's a lot of flipping back and forth and a lot of tagging chapters in your books and it's it's more it's not worth all the effort so I would read them in the order they came out personally but you could read them chronologically as well. So, no, you didn't miss anything. You, you might have missed it. it. I mean, it was kind of subtly hidden in there. Um, I even pulled out the, the two books and looked at the conversations side by side, and they were verbatim, like word for word with Anakin and Thrawn. I mean, it, was, I, it had to have been planned. Timothy Zahn is, is a genius when it comes to writing Thrawn in these books. So um, I don't think you missed it, and uh, I, it, it's in there, I promise. Um, maybe you haven't gotten to it yet, that's entirely possible as well, um, but just keep reading. I promise you, there it, it'll be it'll all be made clear eventually, and especially the end of the third book. Oh my gosh! You know what? Here's what you do. Here's what you do. You read them in the order they came out. You read the Thrawn trilogy, then you read Thrawn Ascendancy, because the end of the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy will make you completely rethink the Thrawn trilogy, the, the first three books that came out. So read Thrawn, Thrawn Alliances, Thrawn Treason, then read Ascendancies 1, 2, and 3, then go back and reread the Thrawn books again. And I it'll probably make you completely take them in a different way. So uh, keep going, man. Uh, they're, they're worth it. And like I said, if you guys are getting into the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy for the first time, take your time. Don't rush them. Don't, even if you've got more books after that to read, forget about them for right now. Take your time. Go through these books monotonously, tediously, and you won't regret it. I promise. So uh, thanks for sending in the question, Dave. I do appreciate it. Uh, And the final question this week comes from Brad Barker. And Brad says, Can you give my wife and I a definitive answer on whether the prequel novels are canon or not? We've heard it both ways, but need to know uh, if we should include them on our shelf. Thank you in advance. No, thanks for the question. Um, First off, you can put whatever on your shelf you want as far as Star Wars books go. And now if you're talking a canon shelf, which I'm assuming is what you're doing, then I get where the question's coming from. Uh, so Del Rey hasn't come out, or Lucasfilm hasn't like actively come out and said that the uh, novelizations for Episodes 1, 2, and 3 are or are not canon. 
but they don't include them on the timeline. Like, if you open some of the new Del Rey novels and look at the timeline, the film is there, but the novelization is not. And if you look, there's novelizations for the films in there as well. So it's they, they don't include them on the timeline inside these books. However, I put them on my shelf. I don't know if you can see or not on the video version, but yeah, I've got episode one and two right there, and then Dark Disciples right between that and Revenge of the Sith. I've got them up there. They weren't always there. Um, they I added them after... I think it was after the novelization for uh, Solo came out. Um, and the reason I went ahead and added them, they, they've always said, you know, those novelizations are canon where they line up with the films. Uh, the films trump anything, you know, in you know, written form or in comics or anything like that. The films are the end-all, be-all of canon, right? Um, but... They have actively retconned some of their own stuff in the novels with the films that came out later. I'll give you a great example. In the novelization for The Force Awakens, at the end, when Rey is on the uh, is is at the base on Dakar, and she's getting ready to leave to go find Luke Skywalker, right at the end, her and Poe meet for the first time. And it's, you know, hey, I'm Poe. I'm Rey. Yeah, I know. You know, that kind of thing back and forth. Uh, and that was canon up until The Last Jedi film came out. Because in the film, at the end, Ray and Poe meet for the first time. And it's the exact same conversation. Hey, I'm Poe. I'm Ray. I know. Like, that's the exact same thing. And it feels like there were... They didn't touch on it at all later in, like, Rise of Skywalker, but I feel like there was, like, sparks there between the two of them. And I remember... Everybody saying after The Force Awakens came out that Poe and Finn should be, a, you know, a romantic couple and everything like that. And I feel like Lucasfilm and Del Rey were like, well, nobody read the novel, apparently, because there were sparks between Rey and Poe, so let's just put that conversation into Last Jedi, which effectively retconned that part of the novel. But that novel is still considered canon, where it lines up with the film, right? According to, De to Del Rey and Star Wars, their words, not mine, where it lines up with the film, it is canon. It is still a canon novel. That got me thinking uh, about the prequel books because there are things in the prequel novels that are not in the films that are great, great things, awesome material. Stuff between Obi-Wan and Padme talking about Anakin. You know, there's great stuff in there that needs to be canon. You know, the, the Mon Mothma talking to Bail Organa and Padme about starting the Rebel Alliance. Like, that's in there. Amazing stuff. But there's also stuff in there that is no longer canon because it's been told differently somewhere else or, you know, some along those lines. Uh, but to me, that seems like the exact same situation as the novel for The Force Awakens. How something in it was retconned by something that came out later on. And so it is now, it's still canon, but that part of it's not canon. That's the same thing going on with the prequel novels. You know what I mean? So I went ahead and added them because, to me, they're in the same boat as the novelizations that have come out since Disney took over. That's why I add them. So uh, are they canon? Are they not canon? That depends on who you're talking to. As far as me, I'm going to call them canon at this point. I Like I said, there's things in there that are really good that I want to be canon. I would almost, at this point, take it like this. It's canon until it's not. It, if there's something in one of these books that is never touched on in the films, um, for example, let me think of something. Um, oh, what was in some of these books that... No, okay, so uh, we'll, we'll use the conversation between Obi-Wan and Padme about Anakin because it's a, it's a great piece of material. And it's, it's, it just builds on Anakin and Obi-Wan's relationship. Obi-Wan basically tells Padme he knows about them. And he never said anything because he knew it made Anakin happy. And so he was on their side the whole time. He never once said anything, right? That never happened in the films. But I'm taking that conversation as canon now until I'm proven until it's proven that it's not. I don't know what could come out that could make it not canon. But until it's not, you know, until it's officially no longer canon, to me I'm going to continue to believe that it is. So 
If I were you, I would go ahead and add those novels to your canon shelf. I think they're a great addition to everything that's come out since Disney took over. Um, and, and just think of them as the same way as you do the novelizations for Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker, Rogue One Solo. Just think about all of those the same way. So uh, I hope that answers your question. That's going to be my definitive answer from here on out. It just It's canon until it's not. So uh, I hope that helps you guys out. And uh, I, I hope to see your canon shelf someday because I, I love seeing people's canon shelves and how they organize their books and what they've got, what they don't have, what they're after. Because everybody has that one holy grail piece of canon that they're always looking for that they can't find. You know what I mean? So uh, I, I hope to get to see it someday. So thanks for sending in the question, though, Brad. I hope that uh, helps you and your wife out. Guys, that does it. That was all seven questions. That should do it for this week's episode of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. It, it means a lot to me to see you guys coming back and, and hanging out with me uh, and talking about our favorite thing in the world, uh, Star Wars. Next week, we're going to be kicking off the villain bracket again when Usyk joins us. Uh, and we're going to be starting on Sith Lords. We got through uh, general uh, general bad guys, and now we're, you know, we moved on to bounty hunters. You guys vote on the villain brackets to let us know uh, who's going to win, and uh, we're moving on to Sith Lords. I do believe it's Sith Lords. I might be mistaken. I'm pretty sure it's Sith Lords, but well, if not, it'll be Sith Lords next. So uh, I hope uh, hope to see you guys next week. It's going to be a blast. Thanks for tuning in this week, everyone. Uh, and until next week, may the Force be with you guys. You've just been listening to the latest episode of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. I'm Brian Miller, joined by my co-host, Usuf Wally. You can stream new episodes of the podcast every Saturday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Anchor.fm, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash 1138productions. Be sure to like and subscribe on whichever platform you're listening in on. If you'd like to get a question on the show, you can send it in to us at starwarscanonpodcast at gmail.com. Until next week, keep it civil, and may the Force be with you.